I'm going to show you the easiest way to create a consistent AI influencer using a couple of web tools. This method will allow you to download all the images from an Instagram account with one button and use all those images to train a model in scenario.com. Now, before we get started, hit the subscribe button now if you want to be updated on the latest AI influencer tools and other AI tools in general. New things are coming out every week. So to save yourself time, you might as well just hit the subscribe button now. now I want to make this clear before we begin. The tool that we're going to use scenario is actually better used for creating game assets. You can see here what kind of assets they're working with. So this tool here is going to be optimized for this kind of art. There's some room for some realistic looking faces, but you're not going to get the best results for a realistic looking image. But we're just going to say screw it and try to make a consistent AI influencer with this software. If you're a beginner in this, this is still going to help you understand kind of the concepts and how creating a consistent character works. And then once you understand that, it'll be a lot easier for you to jump into the open source tools like Comfy UI or Koya or Focus. Let's get started. So we're going to train our model using Atana's Instagram. We're not going to be doing this for commercial use. This is just for educational purposes only. So instead of going through every image and screenshotting it and cropping it out, we're going to make this easier on us. So you want to go to Google Chrome's web store and download a or IG downloader. I'll leave a link in the description for you. But basically what it does is it allows you to download, say, this image with one click by clicking this icon here, and it goes into my download folder. So you could do it that way if you want to download some selected images, but we want to go ahead and download all of them on this Instagram account. So at the top, we're just going to hit download all, hit edit files, and it'll download all your images into a folder like this. Now we have all the images that we want. There's some in here that we don't really want that don't show her herself like this. So we can go in and delete those. There might even be some videos in there. Just go ahead and delete those. We're going to be working with images only. So download those into a folder that you know where it's located. Now we're going to go to scenario.com. Now scenario is free up to a limit. You could upgrade your plan and get quicker priority processing, more images. This video is not sponsored by scenario, by the way, just showing you a cheeky method to make consistent AI influencers. Okay. So I already have one of my models here, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So uh, once you're in scenario.com, you want to go to the left and click on models. Now, once you're here, you want to go to the top right, hit new model, and we're going to train and start training. So now we want to drop the images that we want scenario to train. Now, again, you only want images that have her face or even her body. So I'm just going to click into this folder and hit control A to select them all, hit open. And right now it's only going to use the first 15 images. So Let's go in here and see if there's some in images that we don't want, like here, there's this just a food picture. We're going to take that out. Anything else? Here's a, a little like anime picture. We're gonna remove that. I think this will be doable for now. So just go to upload images. Your images are gonna be uploaded. Now this might take a while. Now we have our images uploaded. Now it's automatically going to put in some captions for you, but this is one of the most important parts of training your Laura. If you don't know what a Laura is, it's basically a model trained on a specific object or person. Right now we have, we're training this Laura on Aitana, her face, her body, her hair, and the captions basically tells the AI what it's looking at. So in the captions that we have now, it's giving us its best guess on what the image is. So here it says, Arafed woman with pink hair and blue bikini posing for a picture. That's not too bad. I don't know what an Arafed is, but we're gonna remove that. We're actually gonna replace that with something else. We're gonna replace it with something that we're gonna use in every image, basically giving her a name. We're just gonna say Aitana. So when the AI sees Aitana, it knows that it's this girl that we're referring to. So this, we're going to take this and paste it into the beginning of every caption here. And we're also going to remove RF, what, whatever that is. I don't know. Now, keep in mind when you're uploading your images and making your captions, this is your data set, the images, the caption. Now we're going to refer to this Reddit page here on what a good data set is. We see here high quality input means high quality output. So if you're posting pictures that are pixelated or bad quality, it's you're going to get a bad quality output. More quantity, more images, and more variety is better. If you're forced to choose between quality and quantity, quality always wins. Upscale as a last resort, avoid it if possible. Now let's look at preparation. Now this is saying that you may need to crop your photos to a specific width and height, but Scenario actually does that for us. It automatically crops them to be all the same size. Sometimes it'll even like crop out the face. So when you upload the images and you're like select 
selecting which ones you want, you can click into the picture and adjust the crop. If you are teaching a specific face, but want to be able to change the hair color, then you should describe the hair color in each image so that the hair color becomes one of your variables. So if we go back to scenario, we can see that it kind of automatically did that. You can see that it says woman with pink hair, woman with pink hair, woman with pink hair. Uh, and some of these, it doesn't. So that's something we probably want to add if it doesn't have that. So let's just say woman in pink or woman with pink hair and we'll do the same with this one same with this one so now if you're teaching with a specific face which is what we're doing you should not describe that it has a big nose you don't want the nose to be a variable that you can change because then it isn't the specific face anymore however we can still caption face if we want to because that'll provide more context to the model that we're training so what this is saying is that we don't want to make any specific variables like uh, on her nose or on her lips because we don't want that to be something that the AI changes. We just want the model to recreate this face here without making any changes to her eyes or her nose or her lips. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of what good captioning means. This is a whole document here on Reddit. I'll put it in the description if you're interested and you should be interested if you want to create consistent AI people. Because if you go through this whole process and you get an output that does not look anything like your person here, it's probably because your image data set isn't good or your captions aren't good. So, so if you really wanna make consistent images, you're gonna wanna read this whole entire thing. I know this is a lot, but this is why consistency in AI influencer creation is very difficult because it's hard to do. And the people that do it right, they're experts with working with data sets. And if you don't wanna do all this yourself, we're currently working on an agency that does this for you, for AI influencers, but we also work on creating AI images for other industries, e-commerce, digital marketing, advertising, gaming industries, architecture, construction, interior design, physical products. We can do it for you with our professional artists and engineers. If you wanna work with us, I'll leave a link in the description for you. Okay, so we have our image and captions. It's not 100%. But we're just going to go with it. So once you have this fleshed out, you want to go to the left. And since we're working on a specific person, we're going to want to click character here. And now you don't want to touch anything in advanced settings. You just want to hit start training. Now, this part is where it's going to take the longest since we are on a free plan on scenario.com. The last time I did this with my other model here, my other model, some, this one, one of these, it took about, I don't know, an hour to two hours. But once you got your model done, you will have one of these here just says new model unless you named it different. Once you're done, you want to go to models, go to the top right, hit plus new model. And now instead of start training, we're going to hit start composing. So now we can combine Laura's. We can combine the Laura that we just made on this specific person, and we can combine an existing Laura slash model. So we want to pick our model. So go to your Laura's and hit add on the top right. It's going to add your model here to the Laura components, then go to platform models. So now we have a limited amount of Laura's that we can use here. Now here, this is one of the differences I found with using open source tools and some something like scenario.com is that you are limited to what you can choose. You're limited to customizability. So if we were working with open source tools, we'd be able to just go to Civit AI and just pick any of these models that they have here on the website, which are a lot better than what is on Scenario. Okay, I might have to blur this because instantly a not safe for work image just showed up. So you gotta be a little bit careful. You gotta be, actually, I'm seeing a lot of stuff. You gotta be really careful when you have Civit AI loaded up. Yeah, do not load this up when you're in the office. Uh, we'd be able to go and pick this model here, which is one of my favorites, the realistic, uh, the real visual model, high quality, realistic. I like the skin textures on this model. We'd be able to, co to combine this with the Laura that we made in Scenario. Since we're working with Scenario, I, I don't even think that we can um, extract our Laura model file from this. This is what you're kind of limited to when you're working with software like this, where they keep everything in the thing so that you have to buy it and continually using it monthly. This is why I highly recommend learning how to use open source tools like Comfy UI or Focus or Koya. Using stuff like this just kind of helps you get your foot in the door and gives you a little bit of understanding. So if we're gonna use a, a realism model here, um, the best one that I see here is classic 3D realism, which I don't think looks very good at all, but we're gonna go with it. So we're gonna click add to the 
top right here and now it's going to add it into our lower components and now here is where we can kind of adjust the weight of how much we want these LoRa's to affect the output. So to start out, we're going to make our new model. We're going to give this a pretty high weight here at 0.9. And in our classic 3D realism, we're going to turn this down to 0.3. And then at the top left, just give it a name. We're going to just say test three and then go to the bottom left and hit test. Now we're going to give it a prompt. We're going to say a Tana because that's how we trained our initial data set. We're going to say a Tana woman with pink hair working at the office in front of a computer. And we're also going to give it a negative prompt. Now, if you don't know what a negative prompt is, it's basically everything that you don't want included in your image. Positive prompt is what you want included. A negative is what you want not included. Since the images that we trained her on, a lot of them were her on a beach. We're just going to say we're going to put beach in there. We don't want her in a bikini. We just want her working a nine to five desk job. We also don't want it to look cartoony. So we're going to put in cartoon. And now let's hit generate and see what it comes up with. Now you're going to notice as you do this over and over again, a lot of getting this right is trial and error. It's writing the prompts, adjusting the weights and settings, seeing what the output looks like, and then going back and adjusting. You're going to see this happen a lot, but that is the process of getting better and better at this. All right, and here we go. We have our images. They're a little messed up but it's kind of there. Just keep in mind, this is our first generation. We can probably take these images and do a face swap to make the face a little bit more matching with the original face, but it's actually done a pretty good job with like everything but the face. Like the hair is pretty good. It's got the hair down. And if you wanna make some adjustments to this, you can go to the top left and hit refine and you can adjust the weight scale here. We can turn up our, we can turn up our weight on our Laura to 0.95 classic 3D realism. Let's turn that down the 0.10 and hit generate. And this might be absolutely terrible and worse than what we had for, or it could be a little bit better. So this is what we got with that. Our face is still not there. Everything else is not bad. You're going to be doing a lot of, let's see what happens if I do this type thing. Let's see if we turn our weight on our, on our Laura down to 0.6 and our classic 3D realism. Let's turn that to 0.6. Let's see what happens when we do that. Oh, and while that's generating, I noticed that it's using a reference image. So we don't want it to keep using this, this face that we don't recognize. We don't want it to keep doing that. So we're going to turn off the reference image and we're actually going to turn up our Laura to 0.8 and let's see if we can get a better face with that. Now the images that we're generating here are not looking good, but you can see here and the uh, the past images that I've done, like this one of her working an office job, you can get fairly close. And this is also, we're using the 3D realism mod that they have in Scenario. Again, you're limited to what is in Scenario. But if you were to use open source tools, the possibilities are unlimited. Scenario will probably do a better job with uh, like gaming assets like this, like characters that look like this. But I think this will be a good learning experience for you if you're just jumping into AI image generation. And once I start to learn how to use those open source tools more effectively, maybe I'll make a video about that. So if you want that, let me know in the comments, hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next video.